Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, two things, halftime adjustments, and what do you do when someone doesn't know the play? Like, how does it go down? What's going on in the huddle? We're going to dive into it. Talk a little bit about back in the day. Talk a little bit about today. Talk about things that I think we can do better at halftime, different ways maybe that certain teams that are known for doing it really well go about doing it. I'm really excited. This should be a great one. Welcome to the QB School. Let's get it started. Boo! All right, first question, Badland Skid, one of our favorites. How about halftime adjustments? Can you explain that process? The Patriots seem to be masters at that. Yeah, they do. They've been doing it for a really long time. I think that they and people that do halftime adjustments really well, put a little quotes on halftime adjustments, think of it a little bit differently than just halftime adjustments. To me, it's situational football. And what I mean by that is it is closing halves, and it is being able to make adjustments and starting halves at a really high level. So there's three ways, right? So if how you end the first half and then how you end the second half, then how you start the first half and how you start the second half. But really that ending first half, halftime adjustments, and then that starting the second half are really three different things of situational football, in my opinion. And so talking about specifically just the halftime adjustments, I think it's really about a handful of things. It's about having a plan, knowing what works for you, you know, as an athlete, as a professional, as a coach. So for me, I used to love to go to the high, go in there. You know, you got to use the restroom, use the restroom. You got to hydrate. You got to hydrate. You got to check with the teammate. You got to iron out maybe some some things that didn't go your way the first half. But then you kind of get together from a quarterback perspective, the quarterbacks get together. All right, what are you seeing out there? What do you like? What do you want to change? Are there any issues that we need to talk to the offensive line with, the perimeter, the wide receivers, the backs? You know, making sure you're on the same page communication-wise is the first thing. And then the coaches usually kind of huddle on their own. So the offensive coaches will get together. The staff will get together. The offensive coaches will get together. They'll make any sort of adjustments. Oftentimes you'll see like the offensive line, running backs coach, hop up on the whiteboard, talk about maybe a certain blitz or front we weren't expecting that we were able to see and just make sure we're ironing out. We're all on the same page as far as any specific adjustments. Now, if you're getting your face kicked in and you need to make big adjustments as far as different ways to block certain things or different ways that we're going to attack the run game, things like that, where everybody kind of gets around. You see people sitting in folding chairs up in front of a whiteboard, big adjustments. I would say pretty rare, you know, maybe like every, you know, fourth game or something like that, you'll have a massive kind of in mini install, I think at a halftime adjustments, but I think there are different ways for different teams when they look at how they go about it. Is it, hey, what mismatch do we see out there? Where do we want to take advantage of space on the field? You know, what type of play do we want to do? Have we been running it really well? Are they set up for a play action? Are the nakeds available? Can we get the edge? Can we get a trick play that we've been working on for a long time? Is now a good time to do it? All of those things, I think, happen at halftime. I think the big adjustments are, are more rare, to be honest with you, more than anything else. It's more about a time to come together, to be really clear about what the plan is for the second half. You know, who are we trying to get the ball to? Who we want to attack? Is there a mismatch out there that we can really exploit? Things like that. Just one more opportunity to communicate. But the idea that you're going to go in there and change a whole bunch of things, I think is pretty rare, if ever. And then I think the other thing that is funny to think back, like back in the day, you know, like Len Dawson, like hitting, this, hitting a, a heater or something like <sighs> At halftime, you know, those things are are done. Now you've got trainers in there. You're getting stretched. You're getting hydrated. Certain guys get IVs every halftime. You know, all those things. I know guys that change clothes every halftime. Definitely, you know, when you're in a cold weather game, I used to have a whole routine, like change my hand warmer, change my foot warmer, change my socks, come out there feeling good the second half, warm, you know, those type of things like that. Everybody's got their own routine. But very rarely is it like the Al Pacino, like any given Sunday, like, crazy talk you know that there's gonna all of a sudden like oh like now i'm motivated like before i was just playing for fun like now thanks for bringing that up let's go out there and get this done like i just don't think it's very it's not very practical it's not very useful i think it's kind of demeaning to think that all of a sudden you're going to motivate someone because of you know these empty words at halftime i think it's more about what can the coaches and the players reiterate to each other, communicate to each other to make them better and go out there and have a better opportunity to win this game moving forward? And so that's what I always like to think of halftime adjustments. I think that some places do it really well, like the Patriots, again, because they do all situational football really well. I think uh, for someone 
who coaches high school football, we have a specific period in most of our practices called adjustments period. And really it's kind of to reinforce this idea of being able to get constructive feedback saying like, Hey, we need to be better at this. We got to make this adjustment and we make it just two minutes in practice. We, so we practice adjusting. And I think that was a big thing for us to be able to become comfortable and be adaptive in the moment being like, Hey, you know, a lot of younger people, even professionals will feel like, Hey, they're coming at me. Like my coach is talking down to me, da da da. Like, no, it's about making adjustments. It's about seeing the same things on the field. It's about understanding expectations so we can communicate the plan and the players can go out there and execute it at a really high level. It's not because you're getting attacked because you're getting coached hard. It's, this is part of the deal. Being coached is making adjustments, hearing feedback, taking that feedback and improving your game and so we practice it every single practice two minutes essentially like an extended water break but really meant to an intentional to kind of break up into your position group get constructive feedback on the field as opposed to watching the film or like a day later this is like real time next series let's practice the adjustment and i think it really helped and i really like it we'll probably continue to do it but little things like that i think can help make teams better at this type of halftime adjustment but really at the end of the day, it comes down to situational football, practicing situational football, understanding what the plan is, going out there and being comfortable with making adjustments and being adaptive. But it's a great question. You know, I think there's this aura of like, you know, the Patriots are in there like splitting atoms at halftime. They're really good, systemic, adaptable, able to come out, make adjustments. They got a bunch of guys who can play a bunch of different positions. And so they kind of find ways to find those mismatches that you can see and they exploit as the game continues to go on and on and on. But I think every team tries to do that. They've obviously just been doing it longer, better for, for a really long time. And so they're fun to watch when it comes to halftime adjustments. But great question. Appreciate it. Next question, L Train 45 Have you ever had a time in a huddle during a game where a player just didn't know the plays? How'd you handle it? Did anyone get out of hand? Could you go over some quirky things that go on in the huddle? Thanks. Good question. So this happens a lot, especially for a backup quarterback, uh, especially in the preseason. So it, it's a legit nightmare where you'll get in the huddle. I remember certain, definitely early in mini camps, you'll be in huddles where you might not know everyone. And so I used to call it choir huddles where I would go basically call, call the play, you know, uh, green right, Fox 2, XY hook. And I would go through every single position. All the perimeter players. You have a 15-yard hook. You got a check flat. You got a 10-yard hook. You have a post alert. You have a check flat. All of those things, every single one, and then make sure that the offensive line knows who they're sliding to. And so those type of things, that happens all the time. That is preseason football, in essence. And really, even if you... Aren't, you think that they probably know the plays, I would always usually reinforce it, especially to the guy that was kind of the number one read, like, hey, I'm looking your way. You got to run. We need you going. All those things. So like, there's not a play to take off. Like, I'm coming your way. I'm looking your way. Or to the back, especially too, when you're in the backfield with them, shotgun, third down, like, hey, I need you out. Check down. Get out. Get out. Get out if you can. Those type of things were... I was always like, you got to, you know, you got to option over the ball. You got to check wide. You got to check swing, like those type of things, like just to reinforce, to make sure we're on the same page over communicate. And so to me, that's just the reality of it. I remember it took me a while to get used to it because you really have to have a pretty strong understanding of what the offense is to be able to do that. Now, if you're just learning the offense, you're just trying to kind of regurgitate what a coach has said in your head and just spit it out. And hopefully you say it in the right order with the right syntax, but if you know it and you can control it, that's kind of the controlling the offense, being able to get in and out of where you want to do with making sure everybody's on the same page. When you see quarterbacks at the line of scrimmage, like moving people up, moving people back, we need you in motion, those type of things, or correcting someone, that's when you know they have a command of what they're being asked to do and can communicate it to their teammates. But I always like to over-communicate, especially in the preseason where it would be a nightmare sometimes. If you come out, you expect a guy to run a go route and he runs a hitch, or you expect an out and he runs a post. Like those are bad feelings from the end of, from the pocket. And so, you know, you just do the best that you can. I think I always tried to get it to the guy that I trusted the most, you know, especially on like a third down situation. I'd rather throw it to the guy that I trust than the guy who might be the more athletic dynamic dude, but might, you know, run the wrong route every other time or doesn't know where to line up, doesn't know what the split is, all of those things. And so it all plays kind of a, a component on where you decide to go with the ball, whether it's coverage, whether it's matchup, whether it's, you know, can I trust this dude to do the right thing when it matters? And so, 
you know, that's the other part about practice. Hopefully you build up that trust, but not always in the preseason. You don't for sure. Cause you'll be in the huddle with guys that you might not have thrown five passes to all camp. And so that's just the reality of playing quarterback in the NFL, especially in the preseason. Some of the craziest things I ever saw in the huddle besides for the awkward, like fight or, you know, barf. Cause the guy's out of shape. Definitely seen people pee their pants, not because they're scared, just because they couldn't take a break, especially back in the day in high school. I won't, uh, say any names, but it wasn't it wasn't that uncommon, and it happens at every level. But you know things like that. The huddle is a special place. I've heard people say all the time, you know, like the things you miss the most besides the paycheck, the locker room, hanging out with the guys, the huddle. It's just a special thing. And nowadays, with how fast the game is evolving on most levels, there isn't a lot of huddles or muddles. But this idea of coming together, having a quick plan, executing it, violent collision sport, coming back, doing it again, really cool, really fun. So good stuff in the huddle. Always a little chaotic, but you got to have, from a quarterback perspective, my thing was always like have the command enough to tell every single person what they've got, and then you feel a lot more confident that you're going to be on the same page. So that's what I always tried to do. Great question. Appreciate it. All right, that's a wrap. Talking NFL half times, talking huddle adjustments, talking choir huddles, talking about being able to have the command of the offense, get in, get out. Uh, anything else you want to see, hit me up with a question. I appreciate it. We're also live streaming coming soon. I'm going to put it on there somewhere. Thinking two Mondays ish, depending on when you watch this video. But appreciate the support. Please subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Boom.